Sorry. Now, I'm sure you're a smart man, Frank, and I know that you know, <laughs> I know that you know that all the first Christians were Jews, agreed? What do you mean? All the first Christians were Jews. All the first Christians, okay, uh, yeah, okay, all right, okay. all right, okay. Right. These Jews started to venerate the Sunday as an important day. There is no Jewish reason for a Jew to venerate the Sunday as an important day. There's no Jewish reason to do that. But yet these Jews started to venerate the Sunday as an important day. Now, why would these Jews mm -hmm. who believe that Jesus Christ rose on a Sunday yeah. start to venerate the Sunday as an important day? Do you understand that that's a decision that they've made? But why? Because they, they, they uh, ascended to that belief that this is the correct one. That's fine. There you go. That's what they've done. Did you all hear that? Frank agrees with me that the reason why these Jews yeah. started to venerate the Sunday as an important day yeah. is because they believed that Jesus Christ rose on a Sunday. Okay. Are we agreed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right. would make sense. Yeah, that right. would make sense. Just so you know, it is an indisputable fact of history that the Christians started venerating the Sunday as an important day. It is an independent fact. But it is an independent fact that only makes sense when you put in the resurrection as an explanation. There isn't another explanation as to why these Jews venerated a Sunday. Okay. Here's another independent fact. Independent fact number two. Undisputed among scholars that the Christian message about Jesus having risen from the dead emerged and, and emerged from Jerusalem not from Antioch not from Damascus not from Alexandria not from Rome not from Carthage now why would the message about a risen Jesus appear in a city where Jesus died and was said to rise again and not somewhere else if it was just being made up you know what you're doing? Go on. You're, you're, you're giving me behavioural changes of a people that once believed in something else and now ascended to believe in something else. Correct. Cool. That's what you're giving me and that's what I'm hearing to you. Fine. If they did that, that's okay. I'm asking you, you've made the claim that this said person, Jesus, who I believe I believe Jesus existed, but it's just a belief. But yeah. you're going to tell me it's 100% fact, right? Yes. You're going to say, so, do you have empirical proof of that? Not about what the people who uh, was aspired to believe in something else. Do you have the proof that that specific thing happened? Are we honest now? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Frank, yeah, yeah. your your epistemology is flawed. Okay, right? Stay there, there, there are different kinds of proofs for different kinds of claims. Right? What you're trying to say is, I want empirical proof yeah. to the resurrection. Yeah. Right? There's no empirical proofs for miracles. Miracles are by their nature supernatural events. Right, right, right. 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 But, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. there's no empirical proof that the circumference of a circle is 360 degrees. There are mathematical proofs, but there's not empirical proofs. Because perfect spheres, there's no empirical proof for the number pi, but there is a mathematical proof. So, so empirical proofs. Okay. Sorry, we're having a conversation. We're having a conversation. Sorry, we're having a conversation. You're wrong. Empirical evidence. Empirical evidence is physical evidence. Triangles don't in triangles don't exist in nature. Perfect spheres don't exist in nature. So your sphere and my sphere could be so, different, right? No, no, there's only one kind of sphere. But but the mathematical sphere, but the point is the empirical proof for pi doesn't exist because empirical proof is physical proof. Mathematics is yes. not physical, it's conceptual. Okay, so give me right. the physical proof now. So, of, of, of the uh, what we're talking, yes, thank you. Yeah. Now, what you what you cottoned on to very astutely, Frank. Say again, what did I do? What you cottoned on to very astutely, okay. very intelligently, very apprehensively, yeah. very 
wisely yeah. is that my evidences are changes in behavior. Yes. Now, do you agree with me that every change of behavior occurs for a reason? Of course. Whether true Great. or not, it happens for a reason, yes. Exactly. Yes. Whether true or not, all, 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 all evidence, all changes of behavior occur for a reason. Yeah. Now, you wanted an example of a physical proof. Let me give you a physical proof. All right. Connected to a change of behavior. Let me, let me lay it out for you, Frank, and then you can comment. Yeah. Jesus talks about the Jews um, venerating the tombs of the prophets okay. as a way of testifying to their hypocrisy. Did you know that? No, I didn't know Right. That. So in scripture, Jesus talks to the Jews yeah. and he says, you whitewash tombs. You honor the tombs of the prophets, but inside you're hypocrites. Now that's, that's me paraphrasing. All right. Right? So in other words, Jesus is commentating on a Jewish custom okay. that when a religious leader dies, a religious leader of importance, the Jewish thing to do is to venerate the tomb. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. That's the cultural thing to do. Right. Like in Western culture, we place flowers on the grave of our parents. Yeah. Yes. Do you yeah. place flowers on? Will you place flowers on the grave of your parents? Right. That's a cultural thing to do. Your parents die. You put flowers on the grave. It's what you do, yes. right? And that happened in the past. What you do, your religious leader dies, you venerate the tomb. Christians didn't do that. They did not venerate the tomb of Jesus. Not for centuries, they didn't do that. That happened when St. Helena came along and St. Helena built a church that became a, a, a place of pilgrimage for Christians. In other words, the Jewish thing to do physically to venerate the tomb, they didn't do. Why didn't they do it? Change their behavior. Why did they change their behavior? Because, yeah, no. because the tomb was empty. There was no body inside the tomb. And because there was no body inside the tomb, yeah. the tomb wasn't special. Okay. Do you get that? Yeah, I get that. Right? So the, the behavior is co connected to physicality. There is a physical place. Yeah. And there are physical things you do, but they don't do them because the reason for doing them is because there's a body in there. Okay. But there's no body in there, which is a physical thing, and so they don't do the things connected to venerating the tomb. Right. That is another evidence for the resurrection. Is that your a, reply. Is that, is that your criteria for how... That, 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 is a, that is a fact of what the early Christians did. Okay. I mean, that, I mean that for you, that's enough for you. But for me, it's, it's still things that have been documented. So even when we talk about these changes of behaviors, yeah. it's still documented. It's still doc we don't we don't know that that happened. We don't know it happened. No, we do. Oh, you, you was there. Right. One second. Right. So he. So let me ask you this question. Yeah. Did Julius Caesar cross the Rubicon? I don't know. Right. I don't know. It, it, it's documented. It is, but I don't know. Right. Did did the Romans invade Britain? I believe so. Why do you believe so? It was documented and that's our only evidence. Again, when I, when I believe there's parts of this book that's true to me, but I, be, I don't know, I, I am open to being 100% wrong about this whole book. Wait, one second, one it's second. A belief. I, I need to correct myself because I said Romans invaded Britain and that's our only evidence. There is physical evidence of the Roman presence. Okay. But the point is, so, so, so the point is, when archaeologists do history, yeah. They use documents of parts. Oh, yeah, that's what we have. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's what we have. Yeah, yeah. So you, what you're saying is yeah. you don't know anything about history that's documented where the documents are our only evidence. No, that's not what I'm saying. Right. I, I understand that we have all that we have, if we're going to a far removed event, yeah. I understand that all that we have is bits of artifacts documents it's all that we have we don't have video evidence yet. unfortunately we don't have pictures so we have to work within the realms of who wrote it why it was written and what the what it was meant agreed you understand agreed so that's all that we have these now, are these are all sound principles but are those yeah. documents evidence of history absolutely a thank absolutely. you absolutely yeah absolutely thank there's you. room that is ab there is um historic and remember i'm not taking the existence of Jesus away yeah i'm not saying that i know you're not what, what i'm saying is even if it was documented at a time we found it at Dead Sea Scrolls, which you gave me over, earlier over there, even if we have that and it's been documented by people, now, how do we know for a fact that it happened? 
the way it's written. We don't know it. Yeah. We have to believe it or we have to compare it. As you said, to other testimonies testimonies, and, and see it too and be like, okay, well, if, if this person is saying it, if this person and it all matches, then it must mean it happens. Yeah, so if, if evidence triangulates yeah. upon a... Yeah. So if, evi if independent pieces of evidence yeah. all triangulate yeah. on a, a, a similar conclusion, right. Yes. Then, then we have good grounds. Yeah, yeah, good we have yeah, good yeah. grounds to believe in that. Yeah. Now, when it comes when it comes to knowing anything in history, mm. we don't have one hundred percent certainty. One hundred percent. Yeah. But we don't operate like that in daily life. You don't know with one hundred percent certainty that yeah. today you aren't going to get stabbed. Yeah. Right. You don't know with one hundred percent certainty that when you cross the road you aren't going to get run over. Right. But you operate on a measured degree of certainty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. When you yeah. match, so let me just tell you, Frank, about what faith really is. What's it's analogous to? Okay. Faith is analogous to marriage. In other words, when you meet a woman, are you married? No, no. Right, Go, he's a good looking guy, ladies. <laughs> you know, so maybe one day he'll find a nice wife. Heartbroken. But one day, bro, God willing, you're going to meet the love of your life. And you're going to know a certain, you're going to get to a point where you know enough about her yeah. because of her behavior, what she's done in the past mm. and what you've learned about her because of what she's done in the past yeah. to have faith in her about what she will do in the Tomorrow. future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And on that basis, you will, God willing, marry her. Right. Right. But you don't know what she'll be like in 20 years. Absolutely. Yeah. But you will commit yourself to her yeah. based upon historical experiences. Yes, yes. Right? And, and faith in God is like that. We know what God has done in the past. Right. And we and the church. Wait, what, you, what, you know what? Yes, we know what God has done in the past. You believe. Yes. We believe it. We, believe. we don't know it. You believe in your. You, you, yes, we can know. You don't know. Yes, we can know. Because we can know. And well, the, 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 the thing of it is that. Okay, give me an yeah, example yeah. of what you know, what God done yesterday, so I can hear it. Right, he raised Jesus from the dead. All right. All right. All right. And we, the reason why we know is because we have independent accounts of testifying to the resurrection. Yeah. And we have corresponding yeah. independent facts that only make sense because of the resurrection. Okay. And you actually admitted that, I don't know if you remember. But you said that the reason why Christians venerate the Sunday yeah. as a, a special day yeah. is because they came to the belief that Jesus rose from the dead. I believe that's fine. So yeah. let me ask you this question. Yeah. What would convince you that a person you knew had died yeah. has come back to life? What would convince you? Will convince me. Yes. I mean, if they're, if I'm in contact with them, you're in contact with them. I'm in yeah. contact with them. They call me and I recognize them. I meet them. Yes. Physically. Yes. Um, are you aware that the apostles made all those claims? Yeah, exactly. They, well, what I'm saying to you is, I, listen, listen to what I'm saying to you. I believe Jesus resurrected. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that, right? You believe Jesus rose from the dead? I believe that, yeah. Because it, it would make. Why I, are we having this argument, hold bro? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But I'm open to being wrong about it because I'm, I, it's not a knowing for me. It's not a knowing. But I also don't believe he was wrong. Well, you don't know anything with a hundred degree of exactly, certainty. Exactly, yeah. That's what, that's what I'm telling you. So I'm we don't fears. operate like that, do we? No, but we do though, because we, I operate. No, we don't. In, in, in this you're, 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 No, you have got your, your incredulous character. Yeah, yeah. Your skepticism yeah. is out of control. I call to you. Right? I call to you. And, but you're going to tell me and, you know. And logically, and logically, you're, you, if you follow the logic through of your skepticism, you have to arrive at solipsism. Okay. Oh, right? wait a minute. Okay, okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, so my point to you is that you're, we don't need a hundred degree percent of certainty to believe in something. Yeah, I agree, let, I agree. Let with me that. come back to that. a more fundamental question, I agree Frank. That. Yeah. You've just told me that you believe Jesus rose from the dead. I believe it makes sense. I believe it. Right. I believe it. So we both agree that Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah, I believe that. I'm, I've just started telling you all my reasons yeah. for believing Jesus rose from the dead. Your reasons, yeah. Yeah. Tell me your reasons. Tell me your reasons for believing Jesus rose from the dead. For me, I believe that Mary was given a duty to have the immaculate inception of this Messiah to come into the earth and have better sins of everyone. I, I believe that would make sense. It would only make sense that this specific sinless individual 
coming to earth, spread the word of God, now now resurrected from uh, um, um, his death after three days. I mean, that makes sense because it shows that this person is a designated figure upon mankind. Right, so hold on one second. That, may, that would make sense to me. So, so, the, so I just want to point something out to you, Frank. Yeah. You have made a similar, you have made an argument from prophecy. Right? Okay. And yet you have demanded of me yeah. evidence that you yourself haven't because supplied. You're telling me it's a fact. Bro. You're telling me it's a fact. I'm not telling you it's a fact. I'm telling you it's a belief. No. I could Bro. be wrong about everything. The way we establish facts, the way we establish facts yeah. is through um is through uh, uh narratives that explain the other facts. The way that is that is the oh, way you mean, you mean that tes the, our testimony the, the that. way that we establish yeah. what is true yeah. is that we have a narrative that makes sense of the evidence we have okay. evidence testifying to the resurrection we have independent facts that don't make sense without the resurrection and we have a narrative that explains it all which is belief in the resurrection so we can have the same certainty about the resurrection that we would have if space aliens that look like monkeys came down and started zapping everybody, yeah. right? And then people came to you and said, I've just seen space aliens come down and start zapping everybody. And then you go to the place where everybody's been zapped and then you find that their bodies have been burnt yeah. and they're lying strewn dead on the floor and because you're a scientist, you pull out your thermometer yeah. or whatever it is, not thermometer, well, your radio yeah, yeah. detector, and you, 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 you pick up radioactive evidence yeah. connected to, I don't know, uh, plutonium laser beams. Yeah, yeah. Right? Crazy. In other words, you would have other independent facts yeah. and a narrative given by witnesses yeah. that all corroborate one another. We also have the archaeology, archaeology uh, um, studies. We also got the bodies, we also got the optops. Uh, right. optops. So we got more than just testimonies. We actually, because you gave me the bodies, so we've right. got more now. So Frank, if you believe yeah. in Jesus as the Messiah. I believe that, yeah, I believe that. And that he rose from the dead. Yeah, I believe that would make sense. Do you believe when Jesus says that he is the son of the father? Now, when, you, when I read that, I'm saying, that is not, um, it's a metaphorical, it's metaphorical. Right. I don't believe it's literal. What, 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 what do you think I mean by literal? What do you mean? Son and father, you, you, I think for you, you're gonna, it's, it's, does he have the same powers as the father? No, I'm asking you a question. Yeah. You've just said that it's metaphorical. Yeah, I believe And then you said, not like you who thinks it's literal. Yeah. So tell me, since you've placed that on me, oh, what serious. do what do you think I mean by literal sonship? I believe that if you were to say he's a son of God, that must mean that he has similar abilities as God. Okay, that is not what I believe. Oh, okay. Let me correct. I'm wrong you. On that one. Oh. But le but let me correct you in a way that's just going to exasperate you. Okay. Right. <laughs> I, firstly, I don't believe he is a son of God. I believe he is the Son of God. I'll explain. And I don't believe he's got uh, abilities similar to the Father. I believe he has the same abilities as the Father. Okay, same, same. Same, yeah, not similar. I, I, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't agree with that. Right, I, I don't agree with the idea that the Son is similar to the Father. I believe that he is the same, same as the Father. Okay. Right, so what do I mean by he is the Son of God? Well, I believe what it says in Scripture. Scripture describes the Son in the Gospel of John, Acts chapter 1, mm. with the term monogenes. Monogenes means unique Son. Okay. Only Son. Unique only. It's used in other parts of Scripture to describe other sons. Paul uses it to describe Isaac yeah. as the unique son of Abraham. Clearly not because there aren't other sons, because Ishmael was alive, but because he was the unique son of the covenant. In the Gospel of Luke, that some of the children that Jesus heals and raises from the dead are described as the unique or only son of their parents in that there aren't other children. And Jesus is the unique son of the father. That's what scripture says. 
So in what way is he unique? He's unique in the sense that there isn't another one like him. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's, now, that's great though. But that doesn't are, mean that, are you that doesn't mean now he's the vine. I got my mic, but I'm coming back to All some right. police action. Yeah. So, oh. so one second. That doesn't now mean he's the vine. Kind of one second. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. In what way is Jesus yeah. a unique son of the Father? From him being sinless. Right. From him being a sinless messenger for the world. That's his. It, it, everyone has their own uniqueness. Yes. But it's just described that he had his own definitive uniqueness, whether that being sinless, okay. whether that being understanding the message of God to the T. That's that's when I that's my interpretation of him being unique. Yes. Not having any divinity. Okay. Apart from what is ordained by God. Right. That's it. So I agree with you. That is definitely part of his uniqueness. Yes. That is part of the picture. Okay. But is that everything that scripture says about the uniqueness of Jesus to the Father? What the scripture says? No, that's not. That's like, not. Name me another one. No, no I, what I'm saying to you, what, I've just given what I understand so far. But is that the only one that you understand? So far. Right. Yeah. I, I would suggest to you, Frank, that you haven't read the scriptures enough. Okay. okay. I read all of it. Yeah. You read I, to the front and back? Yeah. Okay. Over the course of my life. So, so let me ask you this question. Jesus claims that he has come down from heaven. Has any other son of God claimed to come down from heaven? I don't believe that. No. That part I don't believe. Right. No, I don't believe that. Jesus puts himself in the place of God in terms of Old Testament prophecy. Are you aware of that? Uh, I, I, I am aware of that, yes. I am right. aware of that. Go on. If you are aware of it, give me the place or the paraphrase, your own paraphrase, yeah. of where Jesus places himself as Yahweh yeah. in terms of Old Testament prophecy. Um, I think it's in John where he's referring to, um, they're asking about how, how how did you exist during the times of Moses? And um, Jesus is saying, I, don't, I can't remember who he's speaking to, but Jesus said, before Moses, I am. Using the it's same not Moses, word, it's Abraham. Um, Abraham, sorry. Before Abraham, I am. Using the same word yeah. that was said to Abraham on Mount Sinai. I'll give you a stronger so one. Oh, okay. I'll give you a stronger, stronger one. one. All right. So Jesus speaks about John the Baptist yeah. as fulfilling the prophecy of Malachi 3, verse 1. Shall I show you Malachi 3, verse 1? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, it says, this is Yahweh speaking, yeah. Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says Yahweh of hosts. I said Lord of hosts though. Yes, you, that's what it says. Yahweh of hosts. No, Lord of hosts. Okay, brother, where the Lord is capitalized like that, it's just a replacement for Yahweh in Hebrew. Okay. Right? Uh, yeah. But God, yeah, yeah. God, God, God. You're right. The English says Lord of hosts for the sake of the camera. Yeah. But it's all capitalized, as you can see. And that is a convention to show that it's Yahweh in the Hebrew. Okay. So the point is, Yahweh is saying he's going to send a messenger. Yeah. Right? A messenger before his face. And that messenger is going to uh, speak in, in his name. He's going to come before him and clear the way for him. Agreed? Mm. Right. Okay, bear with me one second. So in the Gospel of John, I think it's the Gospel of John. It might take me a second just to find this. Yeah. Right? In the Gospel of John, Jesus applies that prophecy to John the Baptist. Yeah. Now, what I was talking about. Or he, he, applies, he applies that prophecy to John the Baptist. Oh yeah, what I mentioned about Abraham. No, being, no, you not that. You're talking about a different passage. Oh, okay, cool. So let me let me just show you the passage. Bear with us. It's getting a bit tense around here. Always does. Yeah, always does. And it, and it's always the same group that brings I know you, the I heat. Know what you're say. Always the same group that brings the heat. No, but this, that lady right there. That's your Christian sister, you know. All right, that one I will make that exception. You're right. Dead. No, I'm, I am corrected. The evidence is undeniable. Yeah. Shalina <laughs> always brings the... Man. Right? So... <laughs> right, so if we go to a Matthew 11, 13 to 14. Right. Matthew 11, 13 to 14. Let's have a look at that. So in Matthew 11 to 13, 13 to 14. Right? Now notice what it says. This is Jesus speaking. All right. 
At these men were going away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John, John the Baptist. Yep. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind. But what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing. Those who wear soft clothing are kings, play in, uh, in, or ki in kings' palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, one who is more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it was written. Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way before you. Mm. So, who is the one that says, I send my messenger ahead of you? That's talking about Jesus. That's talking about Jesus. Yeah. But who's speaking? God. God? God, yeah. So it is written. Right, so yeah. the prophet is making the way for God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But Jesus, who is John the Baptist clearing the way for? Jesus. So who does that make Jesus? Yeah, and, and yes, I see why you can understand. I see why you would make Jesus God now. Because right. it's now clearing the way for God. I see why. Right. Again, when I read that, I don't take that. I, I, I don't take so that. So the point is, bro, yeah, yeah. right? You've got, if you're going to use scripture, yeah. right? You've got to at least, uh, it, it isn't a case that we can just interpret scripture however we want. We have to go. No, we can't. We have to, and, and I, we I can't explain do why, I explain why. Because you can't, we don't know empirically that 100% of this was written to the T. Right, one second. And you already made that one earlier second. that one there's second. room for error. One second. But go ahead. Taking the text as it is, yeah. give me a different interpretation. What do you mean? No, that's not my job. No, hold on one second. Because okay. I said to you yeah. that we can't just take the text however we want it. Okay. You said yes, we can. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, using this text as it is in its prima facie form, yeah. you give me a different interpretation about who Jesus is saying John is. Yeah. When I read that, I would be like someone is trying to venerate a possible prophet of God. Yeah, but yeah, being Jesus, who is he speaking about? Yeah, but when I no, but let me let me say this. When I read this, I'm, I'm able to be like, all right, Paul, I read that. No, I disregard it. I don't believe that's written. Who, me personally. Yeah, but not John. Frank, you're not following the argument. Okay, I said to you that we can't just believe scripture however we want. No, but you have the option to take the scripture out. No, you, you can dismiss scripture. If yeah, you yeah, want that's to. what I'm. To, that's what I mean. But what I'm saying to you is, yeah. and what you disagreed with me about, yeah. unless you want to reverse your position. And I encourage you to reverse your position. No, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that we can't just take scripture and say make it into whatever we want it to say. Says who? Says who? Right. So here's I'm going to prove it to you now. Yeah. So the scripture clearly is talking about John. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It says it there about no, John. I know, I know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you interpret that in a way that doesn't end up with Jesus being God. <laughs> When I read that, we have the same interpretation. Thank you. Whether I accept it or not, that's up to me. That's I, I dismiss it. Do you do you re, do you now reject the idea yeah. that we can't just do with interpret scripture however we like? No, there are there are some like for example, son of God. When I when I mean son of God, I can interpret that differently than you. No, that's not what I'm asking you. No, it's in, but that, that that term is in the Bible. Yeah, but Frank, I'm asking you about a principle. Okay, go on. So I'm asking you about a principle. Yeah. And the principle is, yeah. can we interpret scripture however we want? I say no, you say yes. Right, great. Now let's put our two principles to a test. Okay. About and here's the one test. Specific... Yes. Yeah. Let's put our two principles to a test about this one passage. Okay. I want you to interpret this passage yeah, but... in a way you know, that you know, isn't man. talking about that doesn't end up making Jesus his God. Go on, show me I, how no, you no, do no. it. I'm, I'm, I already told you, when we, we, as we read it together, we are totally in consensus about where this passage is leading to. Right. Like, okay, but it's that you. specific passage. Is that specific? But there's more. So, no, we also wanted to question him. Are there other passages in this book that we can interpret it differently if we read it? Right. It will open mind. Is, is that a possibility? Right, I'm going to answer your question. Yeah, go ahead. The answer to your question is yes. There are other passages. Yeah. Other vi uh, there are there are there are uh, passages that are not clear. Yeah. And that can be subject to interpretation. Right. That's what I mean. But Frank, but you have uh, proven my principle yeah. by the fact that you've said there isn't another way to interpret, interpret this that, passage. That's thank you. Yeah, yeah. Which means that my principle is correct. In that, in that, that we can't just do 
whatever we want no, with no. any text. In that specific text. But if it's true, you're, you already admitted that. Frank, you already admitted. Frank, right, yeah, we can always, Frank, we can always interpret this. Frank, if you agree that the prince, my principle stands true here, oh, yeah, here yeah. then that means that no. I have the accurate principle. No, no. no. On, yes. on that text, yeah. Big, thank you. Because you, you already if said that. If it's true of that text, then the principle right. is proven. Let's start again. Let's start again. Let's start again. Are all texts in this book clear? Right. Let's do it the question again. I am saying. She asked the question. One now. second. I am saying that you cannot do whatever you want with any text. I say Jesus. you can't do that. Do you agree? Do I agree with doing anything you want with the text? With any text. No, that's not the way I'm wording it. That is exactly how I worded it earlier. No, no, okay. Can I, can I word it the way I mean it to word it? Go Okay. I'm saying that me and you are eligible to interpret the book the way we interpret it using this. Now, I'm also saying that there is a possibility that we can interpret it differently based on education, age, all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm saying. But I'm also saying in that text that you gave me, yes, we both come to a consensus that it's pretty much clear following a passage leading that Jesus is the prophesied son of God. No, one second, no. Oh, no, it it, it's putting Jesus oh, as God. Yes, as God, sorry. As Thank God, you, sorry. it's putting yeah, Jesus yeah, as God. God. Yeah, as God, as, Thank as you. God. So when we read that, cool. We can read that and be like, okay, that's pretty much clear. That is clear. But uh, do I have a right to dismiss it? Right, hold it one second. Because what I'm trying to point out to you is yeah. that there is, the, the idea that we can just do whatever we want with any text is not a good idea. Why do you keep saying do whatever you want? I'm not saying that. <laughs> you did earlier, but now you backtrack, we can oh, let it go. On, Great. I'm now you backtrack. That. Now you backtrack, we can let it go. That. Now <laughs> let's address Frank. I'm not saying that. You're getting Let's a be honest. Honestly, bro, you are you are benefiting from years of education right now. So so let, I'm really helping you. Right. Frank, let me help you some oh, more. Sorry, sorry. Let me help you some more. Because I agreed with you yeah. that there are some passages that are vague and open to interpretation. Right. And now you agree with me that there are some passages where it's just like it's plain it's as clear, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So the rule of interpretation is yeah. that you use the clear passages to interpret the vague passages. Agreed? All the passages make up the book that you have. You can't just pick and choose and be like, all the passages make the book that you have. So when I read the book and I say, and it says God is word and, and the word was with God, for me, that's the start and the end. So whatever contradicts that, so for me, I, I have the right to dismiss it. And you can't take that right for me. Whether right. I'm right or wrong, if God says I'm wrong doing that, so be it. But at the end of the day, it's a belief. It's, right. it's a belief. So, so I asked you a question. Now you've made your point. Answer my question. Uh, what, what was the question? The did, listen. Did I answer it? I no, you didn't. Frank, you've got to do better. You've got to listen to the. You've got to listen to the question. I've got to listen, yeah. I I said I gave you a principle yeah. of biblical exegesis, and the principle is this: if you have vague verses, yeah. and you have clear, unarguable verses, yeah. you interpret the vague verses from the clear ones. Do you agree with that principle, yes or no? No, because all of the texts make your book. You told me the book is 100% fact. You told me that. I, 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 you haven't still answered my question. So he said no. Okay. Yeah, I said no. He said, no. Right, I said no. Right. But the whole, okay. You're trying to say, okay, what Frank, is... So Frank, let me, let, me, let me explain to you how your answer and your reasoning... I've got a fantastic question. Wait one second. Wait, Frank. No, Frank, 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 we're having a conversation. You have given an answer, and I accept you're right. He did give me a very straightforward answer, but I'm going to point out to you that your rationale doesn't connect to your answer because you said no, and then your rationale was, well, all of the ver all of the verses of your book make up your book. Yes, that's right. But that rationale does not justify the answer to the question because the question was. If you have vague verses and you have clear verses, yeah. that the way to interpret the vague verses is from the clear verses, there's nothing in that principle that denies that all the verses of the book make up all the book and that we should believe in all the verses of the book. It's, it's just saying that we interpret the vague verses from yeah. the clear verses. Yeah. So you pointing out that all the verses of the book make up the book and we should believe in all the verses of the book doesn't justify, does not justify your rejection of the principle that vague verses are interpreted by clear verses.
You finished? Yes. All right, cool. Go on, respond to what I just said. There are vague verses in the book, and yes. there are clear verses in the book. Thank you. If something is vague, that means it's not totally understood. So you must admit that if it is vague, there must be room for it to counteract one that is clear. So are there, are there passages, for me, I would say yes, but for you, are there passages that might, are there vague passages that might counteract Jesus being God? No, no there's none. Yeah, I, I would say there is. I, I, I would say there is. Give me one. I just told you the beginning of your book is telling you that Give me one. Let's just go over to the beginning of the book. Go, okay, we're going to Genesis and we're I going to see a verse Exodus. in Genesis. Exodus, where are we going in Exodus? Uh, I'll hold my Bible. Where's Where's the number of um, uh, the commandments given to Moses? In Exodus one. chapter 20. Yeah, yeah. Right, here, here we go. Let, let's just let's just see. Recite, recite the commandments from memory. I know the first commandment. Do not worship any other gods. That's not what it says. It's not, it's not what it says? Don't worship any other gods? What it actually says is, what? What I am say? the Lord thy God, yeah. and thou shalt have no other gods God. before me. Isn't that what I just... Like, For I am a jealous God. Yeah, yeah, that's what And I about. visit the sins of the people unto the seventh generation. Yeah. And I bless those who worship me I think it's, I can't remember how the, how the yeah, rest Yeah, but I'm, not, I'm right. not saying to go, I'm just saying, verbatim, or was that right, verbatim, just by saying it? That right. do not worship any other gods. Would you agree that that's what the pastor is saying? So so the, the, the Decalogue appears in two places. It appears in Deuteronomy, it appears in Exodus, right? Yeah. It's saying, don't worship so, another god. Right. Right. So how does that, if Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit is God, how does that contradict the idea of not worshipping another god? Before that text is written there, is it is it written that Jesus is God? Before that text is yes. given to me, where, where, so it says Jesus is God. Right. Before that text. Right. Hold on. Let Let's address that point. Yeah. Right. Does the Old Testament say that the Spirit of God is divine? So it said. I'll show you. No. So it said. Yeah, I agree. I'll so show you. No, I'm not. <laughs> Genesis chapter one. Right. In Genesis chapter 1, what does it say? Yeah, Go on, verse 1, what does it say? I don't know, we're reading it now. Okay. <laughs> In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the yeah. earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, yep. and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Fine. So we've got God and the essence and the essence. Spirit of God. Agreed? Yeah, we've got the Spirit, yeah. Yeah, so we've got God and the spirit of god is that divided though would you divide that we christians don't divide the trinity okay so i i would i would say that it's just one Wait, well, one christians god's, god's christians spirit is over the waters god's... christians don't divide the trinity i would i would say so no they don't no me me personally I can you be wrong, but... you don't get to define what christians believe and you do yes who gave you that right the church what? Yes. The church and who gave the church yes who gave the church to ordain you to give the right to, to say that christ did because Christ said, on this you, day... You went from church to just an uh, 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 alternate being. What, what is that? I'll explain. So Jesus is the ultimate being. Jesus founds his church. Jesus gives his authority to preach the gospel. So it is believed. To, well, uh, sorry, are you interrupting now? So it is believed. Are we having a conversation? I'm, I'm, I'm right. making sure you're telling the truth. I mean, you're just pointing out that it's a belief. Of course As if somehow you everything you've said is not your beliefs. Of course, and I made but that the, earlier to you. But the difference between us, Frank, is that my beliefs it's are consistent and your that's beliefs fine. That's fine. are contradictory. A consistent belief is just a consistent belief. It's not, it's not a fact. It's not, it's not a fact. If, it, if a belief system is self-contradictory, should it be dismissed? Should it be? It's up to you. That would be up to you to dismiss well, I'm it. I'm asking you. That would be, okay, that would be up to me and you to do it. No, you, I'm asking you okay. about should you dismiss contradictory beliefs? I would have to make that decision for myself. If I'm asking I, if, you. Yeah, I'm, saying, I'm telling you, if I am stubborn enough to keep that belief even though even though i know that it isn't consistent I'll, it's my right to keep it i'll keep it right. why not frank the, 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 right. you know can i can i say to you bro what you've no, got no, listen, right? what, frank what you've got bro is a little bit of knowledge and way too much pride in well, that little bit of knowledge stop, stop. why you keep telling me what you it is true bro okay. if you your you, analysis you're, you're, of me is fine i don't need it that's just, fine let's just stick to the topic but but, but stop telling me that i am pride i'm not but that's you you've you. got too much pride in too little knowledge all right fine no problem let's just get back right? to the conversation here so that so the point is yeah there's nothing in this verse that denies the trinity i am the lord your god who brought you out of 
Then spoke all the, these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out yeah. of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before but, me. So, so, okay, let's right. stop there. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. Now, 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 my interpretation of that is, that is God. He's coming in the essence of you. That's it. Anything mentioned other than that, you're now going against the text. And now I know it's a different author talking. Now, should I take that as credible evidence? That's up to me. That's up to you. I, that's I, my stuff. That's so, why I'm telling you I'm a monotheist. So let me, let me reply. Yeah. Firstly, Frank, I am also a monotheist. I don't believe that. Well, it doesn't matter what you believe. No, that's just me. That's just me, though. I don't but know. Yeah, you can say it. You're like, okay, if I'm a, if I don't believe in one god, you're a pagan that worships a rock. All right. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I mean, that's literally what you've done. <laughs> that's literally I'm what you've done. No rock, but I have exactly, and I don't worship multiple gods. Yeah, you mentioned the man. Jesus is man. Jesus was man. No. Yes, we believe Jesus and was god fully man and, god and fully God. The point is, Frank, is that. Your statement that I believe in three gods is no more valid than my statement that you worship a rock. I never mentioned that. I know you didn't, and I never said that I worship three gods. No, but you've, met your, you've mentioned three personas. I mentioned, actually, I never said three personas, I said three persons. You've mentioned Holy Spirit, you've mentioned the correct. Son, you've mentioned the, the Father. Father. For correct. me, my, understa my understanding of that is three gods. Well, that's your, your error. Yeah. Oh, error. Correct. It, why <laughs> it's your error. So don't you see that superimposing on what you see as the Bible as correct, and then I see the Bible as false. Right. As You're it, telling me I see it If false, I right? superimpose on you that you worship a rock, is that wrong? I'm not giving you, I'm not giving, why are you giving me things that I'm not giving it to you? I'm not giving you no. I have never given you the belief. I, has anyone, anyone? So we've not mentioned the Father today. One second, one second. We've not mentioned the one Son. Second. I'm not just gonna, the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to use witness evidence, right? Wrong. Everyone, wrong. one second. Everyone who's heard this conversation so far, so far, has anyone heard the words come out of my mouth that I worship three gods? No. 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 Right. So in other words, all my witnesses agree that I have never given to you the idea that I worship three gods. That's so you them. are so That's you right. are superimposing yeah. your belief yeah. onto me. Now, has anyone heard Frank in this entire conversation? Has anyone heard Frank say he worships a rock? No. So I am superimposing my belief onto him. But when I do it. He's saying you've got no reason to do that because I never said it. But when I, but, but when he does it, but when he does it, it's okay. I never gave you a rock. You understand that? You gave me that out of nowhere. I'm using what you say that you believe is to be all one, and I'm saying to you, no, I see that as free. Yes, I see that as free. you, you see it. Yeah, you me, yeah, see yeah. it. Why do you say? Why you give me the rock? Why you give me right. that? Because what I'm trying to say, what I'm yeah. trying to show to you, Frank, is that you're forcing into what I'm saying, things that I have not said. Just like so when, not I, the Holy Father so today. when I... not mentioned the Holy Father today. Exactly. Let me finish, Frank. Right? I have mentioned the Father, I have mentioned the Son, and I have mentioned the Holy Spirit. Frank, I have mentioned the Father, I have mentioned the Son, and I have mentioned the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But I have never once said that they are three gods. So for you to say that because I have said Father, Son and Holy Spirit, yeah. that I have said that there are three gods, yeah. is you imposing on what I have said. That I agree. That I agree to that. Exactly. Yeah. So you should take so, it back. No, no, that's my belief. Well, well, that's you, my belief. well, I believe you worship a rock. I've not presented that to you at all. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I haven't either. All right. Well, you have. You know, Frank, I'm, okay, I'm giving too, okay, you Frank, mentioned the too much today. pride. Too little knowledge. No problem, no problem. That's, that's your pride, analysis. No problem. That's too fine. little knowledge. No problem. But we both don't know everything, so that's fine. So I don't even know why you that. Okay. But so, I definitely do more. All right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. One second. In what in what area? There's something I know more than you, you know more than me. So I we're just we're just paying pie talk. That's I, it. I absolutely know better what I believe than you do. All right, that's fine. That's your that's I'm not even contesting that. I'm not here to But you are that. contesting it. What? That You're I know more than you. No, listen. You don't listen, Frank. You're telling me Frank, Frank, repeat what you said again, and I'm you repeat. Don't listen. Repeat what you said again. Right, I'll say it slowly. Yeah, go on. And I'll say it calmly. Okay? I know by a magnitude of 100 more about what I believe than you do about what I believe. If you say so. If I say so. Yeah. Right. That's not what I'm contesting. I don't know why you. Right, now let me demonstrate it is what you are contesting. Because this entire discussion is about you telling me that I believe in three gods 
and I am telling you, I believe in one God. And we have gone Your all around the houses okay. where I've been demonstrating that I believe in one God and why. Okay. Yeah. And you are in the whole point of this conversation have been contesting that belief. No, it's not just been that though, is it? Everyone, it's, right. It's, we, we've been talking about it. Remember, I've been asking. Yeah, I am. I am. Asking, yeah, yeah. I've been asking you questions about whether this is all belief, whether we can trust all the authors of this book. These, these are all the many points that we talk. We're talking about the, uh, um, what is your criteria of evidence. Right. We talked about that. So it's not just that, is it? We've, right. about, we've, made, we've covered many points. Frank, one second, right? But it's not wait, me. Wait, 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 I know more than you. I'm not. You saying literally that. are saying that, Frank. Uh, when you, I want you to rewatch this debate, okay. right? And when you get to this point of the conversation, I want you to rewind and go back to the very beginning where you told me that you were going, that you tried to show me that I believe in three gods. All right, we'll do that. I'll tell, here's an evidence, a circumstantial evidence, okay. right? We all love Sam Dower, right? We love Sam Dower. The only reason why Sam Dower is recording this debate is because he was hoping that you were going to be someone who proves that Christians you believe in How three gods. He just that's why Sam Dow is here. He yeah. just recorded. Yeah. Well, come on, that's an I'll let you speak for yourself. That's, it's all right. You know, that was arrogance. Was that pride? Was that arrogance? I, I'm willing to bet that that's why he's here. No, no. Yeah. Was that arrogance though? Because you just assumed it. You know I'm that's making true. an assertion. Yeah, I'm making yeah, but, an assertion. Uh, is that could I be wrong? Of course it could be right, wrong. So that was a pointless statement then. That right? was pointless. But my point to you is, it didn't need to be made. Frank, no, Frank. I'm going to bring this bring this conversation to a yeah, close. I've got, I've got to go as well, so I'm going to bring yeah, this conversation yeah, 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 to a close. Yeah, yeah. But but the whole point of this conversation, when you go back to the beginning of this conversation, I'll watch it, don't you're going to see that the whole conversation emerged out of you yeah. trying to show me that I believed in three gods, yeah. and then me showing you that I didn't and the okay. reasons why. Right, okay. And that is how the whole conversation started. And so the very fact that you have forgotten the beginning of the conversation shows to me that you haven't been paying attention, right? right? I, I'm saying to you just as one human to another, yeah. you need to be more humble. I'm humble. You don't know as much as you so, think you so do. Is you your, really is your, don't. Is your, is your correct thesis of me not being humble correct? Yes. Are your, it's correct? Yes. So Because you are arrogantly and proudfully saying that I believe in three gods when you have provided no evidence to the fact and I have given you no evidence to the fact that. and I have demonstrated the opposite 